Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial. In this video, we'll learn creating Atlas maps in QGIS. You can subscribe to this channel to follow all my previous useful GIS tips and tutorials. If you like what you do here and you want to support this channel, you can join our Patreon. I will provide a link in the description below. An atlas is a collection of maps. They usually contain many pages of maps that are related and organized in a book-like format. QGIS has a tool called Atlas that can help you create a map template and easily publish a large number of maps for different geographic regions. So let's go to QGIS and look at today's exercise. In today's lesson, we go to a country called Mozambique. So I've already loaded some layers here in QGIS. I'm going to activate the administrative boundaries of Mozambique. This is Mozambique, a country in the southern part of Africa. And I also have some health sites for Mozambique. And I have also created a map index grid that you're going to be using in this exercise. I'm going to just zoom into our layers and look at the kind of data that we have. So we have some polygon data and uh, some uh, point data for the health sites. So I'm going to just look, look at the attribute table of uh, my data. I'm going to open the attribute table and I'm going to name these regions according to the, their names. So I'm going to use name two. So I'm going to go to properties, then labels. Then I'm going to say single labels, and uh, I'm going to use that mean two. I'm going to make sure that the text is a bit bigger. I'm going to draw a buffer around it. And placement is just at the centroid. That is okay. And I'm going to click on apply. Okay. And I have named my regions. I'm also going to look at the attribute table of the health sites, and you can see they have the names and their they have the amenities. So there are clinics, pharmacies, I believe hospitals and all that. So we're going to also symbolize our health sites using the amenity. So I'm going to go to properties again, symbology. Instead of a single symbol, you're going to categorize these using the amenity. Then uh, I'm going to use random colors, then click on classify. And we have actually the clinic, the dentist, the hospital, the pharmacies. So I'm going to click on apply, okay. So we have the different kinds, and actually the clinics are the ones that dominate this area. Every atlas is based on coverage layer. So for this exercise, I'm also going to add another layer here. That's going to be our map in our coverage layer. So I have created a map index grid here and it contains 26 grids. So I want to have 26 maps covering the whole of this area. You can actually even use the administrative boundary unit and then use the, the small units as your coverage layer. That is actually going to be the second way I'm going to show you how to create an atlas using the administrative boundary. But for, for the first exercise, let's just start with the map index grid. We're going to just follow the same, same process of making a map. We're going to go to the composer. So we're going to go to project, new print layout. And then I'm going to call it Mozambique. Then I'm going to click on okay. And it will bring us to the print composer here. So under the print composer, you can actually see Our layout here, which is white, you can actually change the orientation if you want by going right clicking on the, on the blank page, going to page properties. Then you can change it from landscape to portrait depending on how you want it to be. But I want my I want my my map book to be a landscape, and I also want my page size to be a four. Then I will leave everything else the way it is. I'm going to make sure that it's a bit big. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my map. So I'm going to click on add item, then add map then i'm going to select the area that i want to add my map which is this 
area here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my area has a frame. So I'm just going to put a frame around it. Then the next item I can add is I can add a title. So I'm going to add label. Then I'm going to add it somewhere here. I'm going to change the fonts to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use a bigger font, the bold. Then I just center. I align my my title the way I want it to be. So we'll have different titles for the different maps. Then after that, I can even add another item and I can add the north arrow somewhere here. And I can change my north arrow by going to arrows and changing the arrow to whatever arrow I like. Then I can also add another item here and I can add the scale bar. So I have my scale bar here. I can do a little bit of customization by adding the number of segments to three. So I have my scale. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to now go to the Atlas settings so that I can tell my composer on the Atlas settings that I want to put. So I'm just going to go to the Atlas settings. You can actually access it from here or you can actually go to the Atlas and then you go to Atlas settings. So I'm going to select Atlas. Then I want to tell it to generate an Atlas. Then I'm going to do a little bit of configurations here. So the coverage layer, which is my grid, is going to be selected here. So I have selected the map, map grid index as my coverage layer. Then you can decide to make it hidden, sometimes or not hidden when you want to. If you want to view it when you make your maps, you can actually leave it unchecked. Then the page name that you're going to be using is the page number. Then you can sort by maybe say the page number again also. Then under in our output, file you can actually customize it here but you just want it to have a single file export when possible and then we're going to leave the image export format as a png or you can actually change it to jpeg or any other kind of format you want so now that we have changed our configurations under the atlas we're now going back to go to item properties then under item properties you're going to select still make sure that you have selected the the map then you're going to scroll down and then you're going to say you want it to be controlled by the atlas so i'm going to make sure that you check this box here you can actually customize it to have uh, margins around the feature by 10 percent or a predefined scale which is best fit i usually sometimes like using this one so i'm going to select the predefined scale which is a best fit then uh, nothing happens you need to actually activate the preview so that you can actually see how the atlas is going to look like so you're going to go to atlas then you're going to select preview atlas and as soon as you select preview atlas you can see now it it now brings the preview of the first uh, grid how it's going to look like you can actually scroll through the atlas by going by clicking on this arrow here or just by selecting any kind of uh, at any kind of uh, map you want from your atlas so i can say i want maybe the 13th map when i select 13 it will give me that map for that grid 13. if i say i want maybe for grid 7 it will give me for grid 7. i can even just use these arrows it takes me to the next one which is eight it takes me to the ninth grid 10th grid and, and so, so on so, so on and so forth so you can actually see our scale has changed i can actually even just delete my scale and then insert a new scale because we have actually changed the scale of our map so i'm going to add item add scale bar 
then I'm going to add a scale bar that is a bit manageable now. So the next thing you want to do is we want to customize our our map title here so that actually it can read whatever region we are working on. So I'm going to select the the title again. I'm going to delete everything here. Then I'm going to insert an expression for whatever we want to have as a title. So I can even just say map grid index I can even just say map grid index then I can insert an expression go to fields and values then I can either save the page number because you want to have the index number for that so I can just going I'm going to just select the page number to be displayed at that so you can actually now see it's the map index grid 10 if I go to the next one it's map grid index 11 if I now go to the next one it's map grid index 12 and so on and so forth. The next thing you're going to do is now, you're going to put an insert here. But before we put an insert here, you'll notice that the grids, my grids are actually appearing here and I want them not to appear anymore. So I'm just going to go to Atlas. Then I'm going to hide the coverage layer. And now my coverage layer is hidden. So I can actually just scroll through these maps without having any worry of my grid appearing anywhere so the next thing you want to do is we want to put an insert here so that you can actually be able to now look at the grids here in the insert as we scroll through our map so the grid that will be active will be highlighted in our in the in our insert here so i need to minimize this first then go back to this other side here first then i'm going to now create some groups here so i'm just going to create two groups here now I have the two groups here. The first group will be my layers. And the second group will be insets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all these layers here. And then I'm going to drop them inside my layer, including this file here. Then for my insert layer, I actually need the grid index. I'm going to duplicate the layer. Then I'm going to select take the copy into the second group, which is an insert. Then in my browser panel, I'm going to go to the Mozambique data. I'm going to look for the administrative data of Mozambique. And I'm going to load admin zero as part of my insert. So before we do any changes now in our inset and start styling our inset, I'm actually going to just turn off the layers of the inset. Then we are going to go finalize with our map in the main composer first before we start working on our inset. I'm now going to check the base map so that we can actually finalize on our, on our map in the main composer. So I'm going to check it and it actually loads uh, our base map here. So I'm also going now to go back to the composer hit the refresh button and now I have all the information that I need for my map so now that I have everything here I'm going to click on the under the item properties I'm going to click on lock layer because I want to lock the all these layers and also I want to lock their style so no changes will actually appear when now I turn off the layers in the in the in QGIS and start working on my insert so I'm now going back to QGIS again and then I'm going to now uncheck the layers and I'm going to check the inset and you can see with the inset we just have the two layers that the boundary and the grids so I'm going to move the boundary below then I'm going to now go back to my composer here and then I'm now going to create a new data frame here. So to add a new data frame, I'm going to click on add item, add map. Then I'm going to add my data frame here, which is going to be my inset. So I'm just going to add it somewhere here and then release. And you know, and now we have our inset here. Then we can scale it down. Then 
Then I'm going to make sure it tells a frame. I'm going to select a frame around it. Now we have our inset and we also have our map here. So if, if, if I click on the refresh button, nothing happens in our map because we have already locked our styles and all the changes can just actually appear on this here. So the next thing we want to do is now, now that we have our inset, we have everything set for our map, we're actually going to now finalize on our map and to finalize it i just want to make sure that when i'm in grid 11 it actually shows here that i'm actually on that grid in my insert so what i'm going to do is now um, within these uh, item properties of the of my insert i'm actually going to scroll down and i'm also i'm going to select overviews so i'm going to add an overview by clicking on the green button and this is the overview that is given to me. I'm going to select the map two, which is the map that we're working on. This is the map two, as my to show the overviews of the map two here. So you can actually see it's a bit faint. So I'm going to put a, a brighter color, so it's actually visible. And you can now see this is where map grid index eleven is. So if I scroll to the next one, you will see it changes, and also the map changes. And if I scroll to the next one, you can see it also changes and you can see this is just near the ocean. And you can keep on scrolling up to maybe say the 20th map. And it will just show you how the grids were arranged and how your maps are going to appear. So the next thing we are going to do is now, now that we have uh, everything ready for our map, we're going to now save our map. So for us to be able to save our atlas, we're going to go to atlas. Then we're going to now go to, you can actually export atlas as an image or export it as a PDF. So let's start with the first option by exporting it as a PDF. I'm going to click on export as PDF. And then I'm going to look for where I'm going to save my work. I'm actually going to just save it in data, Mozambique. Then I'm going to create a folder and call it Atlas. Then I'm going to save it to Mozambique Draft Atlas One. Then it's a PDF. I'm going to click on Save. Then I'm just going to click on Save again and it starts saving your atlas maps so this is going to take a little bit of a while our export is complete so let's look at the folder where we saved our atlas and I know our atlas is now ready for printing. And we have our atlas here as one PDF, which is around 45 MB. So I'm going to open it so that you can actually look at our atlas and be able to print it. So our atlas is ready. You can see this is the first uh, map in our atlas. And then the second map is this you can actually see some movement on our insert here then the third map then the fourth map seventh we'll actually learn how to use the other layer which is the the admin two boundary as our coverage layer in another video. That's it for today's exercise. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'm just happy you're here. See you in my next video.